Hey guys, congratulations on successfully downloading the video. Today we are covering Nidarians, the wonderful world of stingers. Remember, we're still covering members of Kingdom Animalia, so the animals we're talking about today are all multicellular, heterotrophic, and eukaryotic. All Nidarians have stinging cells, like this jellyfish, this sea anemone, and the corals pictured here. The stinging cells of cnidarians can be used for feeding and also for protection and defense. All cnidarians are carnivores and they're also all considered predators. As we talked about last week in class, all cnidarians also display radial symmetry, having many lines of symmetry passing through one central point. When we talked about peripherans yesterday, uh, I said that they had no specialized tissues. That's not true for cnidarians, so we consider them a more advanced group. They have a basic muscular system, which allows them to move, as you saw in the video earlier. They also have a basic nervous system that's a simple net of nerves that extends through their body and allows them to respond quickly when they sense food. They also have a basic digestive system. The digestive system of cnidarians is what we call a sac gut, or two-way system. On the anemone pictured here, there's a mouth inside the center of the tentacles. Food enters the mouth, is then digested in a sac gut, nutrients are absorbed in the same sac gut, and then undigested material exits back through the mouth. With their advanced body systems, Cnidarians also have more body organization than we saw in the sponges. There are two different body plans seen in Cnidarians. The first body type is called a polyp and is typical of what you see in sea anemones, corals, or their cousins the hydras. Polyps are designed to be attached to the ground or substrate, which we call being sessile. The mouth and the tentacles of a polyp face upwards. Here in the diagram, you can also see where food enters through a mouth, goes into the central cavity, or sac gut like we talked about, and exits through the same opening. The second body type is known as the medusa. This is typical of what you see in jellyfish. The medusa body type is adapted for movement, so it is not generally attached to the bottom. The mouth and tentacles of the medusa face downward. Watch the short video segment here, which basically sums up what we've just talked about. The second simplest phylum of animals are the stinging animals. These beautiful creatures include jellyfish, corals, and sea anemones. Like sponges, all stinging animals live in water, but they are much more complex than sponges and have two basic tissue layers. They are called stinging animals because they have stinging cells on their tentacles, which they use for defense, for trapping prey, and taking it into their mouths. Food is digested in a large cavity inside their bodies and waste materials are expelled back to the outside through their mouths. Another unusual thing about the stinging animals is that they have a circular or radial body plan in which the segments are arranged like spokes of a wheel. So although they have an upside and a downside, they have no front or back. Nearly all stinging animals exhibit two distinct life forms. Most sea anemones, corals, and jellyfish spend part of their lives attached to solid objects as muscular tubes called polyps, and during the other part of their lives, the same individuals are able to swim freely as umbrella-shaped medusae, like those seen here. Let's discuss a few more topics concerning cnidarians, like how they feed. All cnidarians are going to use stinging cells to capture and subdue their prey. The stinging cells are located on the tentacles and allow a cnidarian to grab onto their food and then pull it to their mouth. They use a specialized type of cell called a nidusite to accomplish this. Let's take a closer look at it. Pictured here, you can see what a nidusite or stinging cell looks like when it's at rest. Normally, there's a long coil inside the cell with a small harpoon-like structure attached to it. 
Now, when the cell is at rest, all of this is coiled very tightly within the cell, but there's a small, small trigger located on the outside. When a small fish or other object brushes up against that trigger, then the stinging cell is released, attaching with that small harpoon-like structure to whatever got in its way. Let's take a look at what it looks like when it's not at rest. Here we see what the stinging cell or nidocyte looks like after firing. You can see the long thread-like structure with spines along the entire length. Those spines are what's going to go ahead and grab on and pull the animal or whatever else has touched the stinging cell towards the mouth of the animal. You can also see there's barbs towards the end, and a lot of the cnidarians, though not all, have a mild venom or toxin associated with this, and that's what usually hurts when you get stung by a jellyfish. If you've ever had the opportunity to, to actually touch a sea anemone, uh, most people tell you they feel kind of sticky. What you're feeling is those small nidocytes grabbing onto your skin and trying to pull you forward. Moving right along, let's go ahead and talk about how cnidarians reproduce. Cnidarians can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Asexual reproduction in cnidarians is most commonly seen in polyps, and it's usually by budding, which is very similar to what we saw in the sponges earlier this week. A small new adult starts growing off of an old adult, eventually it breaks off. Occasionally you can also see a single adult actually breaking into multiple pieces and each piece will grow into a new polyp. However, sexual reproduction is much more common in cnidarians and occurs in both the medusa and the polyp body plans. As always, gametes or sex cells are produced and in the case of cnidarians are just simply released into the water and sperm swim to fertilize the eggs. That pretty much wraps up what we need to talk about in a general overview of cnidarians. Let's look a little bit more specifically at one particular group within cnidarian, the corals.